Welcome and thank you for purchasing PREP, the Portable Response Emergency Plan. In this video, we will show you a quick overview of the PREP and the different user types. There are three types of PREP users, a Level 1 Admin, Level 2 Admin, and a Read-Only User. Level 1 Admins are able to add, edit, delete, and maintain PREP for your organization manage users and groups, and manage all facility emergency operations plans. We suggest only a few of your staff members be level one admins, such as your emergency managers, C-suite, or anyone that would require to make changes to your emergency plans. Level two admins are able to only make changes to the supporting files, meaning they can create folders for your groups and upload documents. Level 2 admins would be individuals within a department that may upload department-specific plans. And lastly, read-only users are able to only view your facility emergency operations plans and other documents you allow. Let's now look at how the PREP is set up. Currently, we're looking at the main website. You would get to this website by going to prephc.com. When you first enter that web address, you'll be pulled up to this where you'll log in using the login information that we've provided, type in your username, password, and then click sign in. Once you've signed in, you'll be able to see essentially a view of the prep. Right here would be where your logo goes in. Now, how would you actually use the prep? Well, on the left-hand side, you'll see preloaded templates that Hapavolve has put in. We'll include the template emergency operations plan as part of your prep. So let's take a look. Let's say you want to look at your emergency operations plan. You go ahead and click the first blue tab. And then what you'll see is called an event introduction, which is essentially where you would put your emergency contact numbers. As you can see, you can put hot links, which essentially are hyperlinks, to be able to click on the number and make the phone call straight out of the app. On the right-hand side, you see some abbreviations that would be throughout your prep to just put a little bit of definition. On the left-hand side are your actual hazard-specific incidents. So these are such as evacuation, fire, shelter in place, and anything else that your facility has identified as potential items that you would need to prepare for. Let's, for example, click fire. When you click the fire tab, you'll see that a response plan which this one right now is an abbreviated guide that we'll provide, provides information of how to respond to a fire. This is where a staff member would be able to read through and see what they would need to do in order to respond to a fire. You can specify by groups of individuals for any specific task for them. And this is just an easy way for them to be able to quickly look through and be able to respond fast. And that's really how it works. Let's click another one, shelter in place. This is another abbreviated guide that you can look through and essentially puts in the information that you have created for your facility and your staff to be able to respond to whatever incident that they may be facing. Now, if we click the Home button, that takes us back to our other plans. You may add in as many tabs as you'd like. You may have different facility emergency operations plans that you'd like to include there, or you may be even simple and just have one tab. Same thing goes for the color tabs. You can have as many colored tabs as you need, or for however many incidents that your facility may face. As you can see at the upper right hand corner right here, when you're on this event introduction, you'll be able to email these plans 
to yourself or to anyone else within your organization, or you may be able to print the PDF as well. Let's go back to the home page. Another item that all of your users will be able to see is this help button. This essentially is an icon key so that they can see what each icon means within the prep. An important tab as well is this docs button. This is where you'll see the emergency phone number, event introduction for that first blue plan tab, the emergency operation tab. This is where you'll see that information again, and depending on however many main blue tabs that you have, that's where all of the additional information will be. On the left-hand side, there is also this thing called the files, where there you'll see multiple file folders, depending on however many you've created, that your specific individual would be able to access, depending on whether you've provided that access to them. We'll show that in a later video. Right now, we're viewing this prep as a level one admin. Well, how can you tell? You can tell because you're able to click this admin button. This will only be available for level one and level two admins. Regular user levels will not be able to see the admin because they will not be able to make any changes. Let's quickly take a look at what's in the back end. So as a level one administrator, you'd be able to click this button and essentially see your organization listed here, that you're active, and these are the different buttons that you can make edits to. So as a level one admin, you'd be able to make changes to the plans. This is where groups would be, where you can add users and supporting files. In the next few sections of this video, we will show you how a level one admin can make changes throughout the prep. In the last section, we gave you a quick overview of the prep and the different user level types. In this section, we'll show you how to add plans and event aids. We are currently logged in as a level one admin. Again, a level one admin can make changes to the plans, groups, users, and supporting documents. Let's first get started with adding in plans, which are essentially these blue tabs when you see on the home screen. To add a plan, go to admin, and then you'll see this button, plans. And currently what you see, Hapavolve has already provided you with a template emergency operations plan. And we will use this as our example through these tutorial videos. To add a new plan, it's pretty simple. Go to the upper right hand corner, and click Add Plan. You can title it anything you'd like. Priority is essentially order you want your plan to show up as. Do you want it in first place, second place, third place, and so on. And then you would check Active to make sure that the plan is available. And then once you click Save, it'll show up on here. The next step is you'll want to add in an event introduction. An event introduction is the page you will see when you first click on the main blue plan tab. This is where you, we suggest to house any emergency phone numbers you may need in an incident. As you can see, Capavolve has already entered in a template. In order to put in a hot link, we can show you right now how you can do that. For example, if you'd like to put in a phone number for the gas utility, you would click and highlight, insert, then click link, and for the URL, we'll put in a special code to ensure that when you're in the PrEP app, you'll be able to click on the phone number and it would prompt your phone to essentially say, would you like to call make this phone call? You would type in TEL for telephone, then a colon, and then the phone number that you would like to use.
that will be the URL. So you're making it into a link. Now, the text that you want to display, what you can do is just highlight that phone number again, copy, highlight the text to display, and then click paste. Then, for the open link in, go ahead and put new window. Once you click save, you'll see that the phone number will be hot linked, or it would look like a hyperlink. Essentially, again, when you're in the app, you'll be able to click that phone number and your phone will prompt you to be able to make a phone call to that specific number that you have there. Again, you can add in any information that you'd like here using this box for editing and formatting. We will include all of this information as part of your template when you purchase your prep. Once you click Update Supporting Material, the information will be updated, and now your users will be able to see that new number that you just added. To go back, you can either click Cancel, so once you've added the event introduction, let's go in and add the colored tabs, which we actually call event aids. These color tabs are for your different type of incidents, such as fire, evacuation, and others you may need to use to prepare and respond to an incident. Again, this template has some of the basic incidents that you may be facing. For example, fire. So since this is already established, you can either edit the tab itself or edit the tasks within the tab. So this is your task card. But for now, let's go ahead and pretend there are no tabs and we'll add a new tab. Again, on the upper right-hand corner, you'll click Add Tab. You can title the incident. So we can put fire again, set the priority, meaning what order you'd like this tab to show up. You can set it to six. And you can actually add in what color you'd like this tab to be. Currently, we have six different colors. For fire, let's choose maroon. Once you click Save, you'll see that another Fire tab had been added. Now, if you want to edit that tab, you can click Edit, and you'll see all the previous information that you had put in there. We can rename this to be Testing for this tutorial. And we can change the priority to 10 so that it would end up showing up at the end of this list. And let's change the color to chrome orange. Once you click Save, you'll notice that it is now here at the end of the list. Now that you've created the tab, you'll actually have to edit tasks. Once you click Edit Tasks, you'll see that there's a card preview on the right-hand side and in this text box, you'll be able to put in the information or the step-by-step -step items that your staff may need in order to respond to an incident. For example, you can do numbers, bullet points. You can even copy and paste any current Word documents that you have specific to this incident, and you'd be able to paste it into this text box and adjust the formatting, and then click Apply so that you can see a card preview and how it would look on the main page. And then you would click Save Tasks to ensure that you've saved the task and the information that you've put it in so that your staff would be able to see it. So let's do an example. I'll create bullet points and say step one, step two, step three. You can highlight the first one and change the color. You can select the second one, make it bold, italicize it, 
you can click highlight step three and make the bullet point go to the right. You can make any changes as much as you'd like in here. Once you've copied and pasted, you can change the formatting based off of the, the buttons that you have here. Now, if I were to click apply, you'll notice on the right hand side that all of the information that I have in here is showing up on the right hand side. This is a preview. Now to ensure that your adjustment is aligned, right now the system is defaulted to be center aligned. So what you'll want to do is highlight all of the information within this text box and if you want it left justified, you'll have to click this. You'll see that it's grayed out, meaning it's been selected. Click apply, just so you can see the card preview, but then you'd want to click save tasks to ensure that the task has been saved. And that's how you add a task. So if we wanted to go back, we can see that the testing for this tutorial tab has been entered there. And if we want to see whether or not this got, got saved, click the home button, go into your template emergency operations plan, which is where we put that new color tab in. And you'll see testing for this tutorial tab will be right in there. Once I click that, you'll see step one highlighted in green, step two, which was bolded and italicized, and step three, which we indented the, the bullet point all the way to the middle. And that is how to add plans and events. In the last section, we went through how to add in plans. Now that we have created the plans, we have to make sure your users are able to view them. In this section, we will go over how to create groups and then how to add a user and assign them to a group. When you are on the home page of PrEP, go to Admin. This is where you will see Groups. Click on Groups. And currently, we have a sample list of groups. Groups can be customized based on how you would like to structure it. There is no limit as to how many groups you can have. In this example, you can see that we have created groups based on their either incident command, or by facility, or by departments, or by the type of employee. The reason you may want separate groups is to allow for different groups to view different plans. For example, if your facility managers are the only ones that have access to utility shutoff plans, you may want to separate them from all staff. Let's add a new group. You'll come up here to the upper right hand corner and click add group. You can name, give permission to view the supporting files you have uploaded, which we will show you at a later point as well as selecting which plans you want your specific group to see. When your user is on the home page, they will then only see the items you as an admin one user has allowed them to see. One thing to note here is that if you do add in a new plan, you will need to come back into your groups and allow them to have access to that new plan by editing the specific group. Once again, this is where you can see the available resources or the plans that you have created for your organization within PrEP. And you can select which resources you want the group to be able to view. When creating users, we have two suggestions. If your organization wants to have separate logins for each of your staff, then your option would be to use the CSV upload and do a mass upload of users. However, when managing these users, it may take a lot of time to maintain due to multiple reasons, such as turnover. A second way to create users is by creating a login for types of individuals. For example, if you wanted all your staff to log into your organization's prep, 
you can create a new user with the email address of staff at myorganization.org and then provide that across all of your staff. You can have multiple people log into one account without disrupting the other. Another example is creating a new user for your executive staff using an email address such as executives at myorganization.com. This makes it easier to maintain the number of users you have within prep. Let's start with manually adding a new user. You'll come up to the upper right again and click add user. And this is where you can fill in the fields. Remember earlier when we talked about groups? Well, that same list exists here. That is why you have to create groups first and then you can create a new user and assign them to the group. Once you've assigned them to the group, you can then mark whether or not they are a level one admin, a level two admin by clicking the check boxes, or if they are just regular users where they can only view the plans but not make any changes, then you will not select level one or level two admin. Then you would create a password, confirm that password, and then before you click save, there are two additional items here. Log password is essentially locking the password for this specific user, meaning that if the user ever wanted to change their password, they will be unable to do so. And then marking the user active allows them to be able to access the prep. As we had mentioned earlier, there is the option to do a bulk upload using a CSV file. You can click import CSV to see the options. This is where you'll download a sample CSV file and try to match the fields accordingly. If you need additional assistance with this, please contact your IT team as they should be able to help you or you can contact us and we can walk you through it. So to summarize, this is essentially where you'll be able to see all of the users you currently have within your prep. You'll be able to see their first, last name, email address that they would use to log in, location if you've set one, whether they are active or inactive, and what group they belong to, as well as what type of user they are. Currently, we're looking at someone that is in the incident commander group and is marked as a level one admin, meaning they can make all the changes within prep. In the last section, we created groups so that we can check which items we want the users in that group to see. Next, we'll be working on how to add in items within docs which corresponds to supporting files. This is where you can create file folders and assign which groups can view the files within those folders and also where you can upload documents. To add in a supporting file, you'll go to Admin, Supporting Files, and just as you would on a regular computer, you add a file folder, in this example, we'll create one for a sample floor plan. Then you can provide the access for the specific groups within your, your preps organization. Since we are currently logged in as an incident commander user, you'll select incident commanders can view this file folder. Save. Then you can add a file, just as you would on a computer. Click Add File, choose the file, you'll see your file here. Then you can assign it to which file folder you want, and then Upload. So you'll see File Folder Name, and then the file folder name again, and the file name. You can put documents in here that are PDF or any images like with the extension of JPEG or PNG. And the file can be 
anywhere between one to once you've created the file folders, your user will be able to see the files. So when you click on the home button and you see this docs button, once you click it, you'll see files have been created. Sample floor plan for file folder is located here. When you click this, you'll see the image that was added in. When you click it, you'll be able to see the file. This works as well on the mobile phone. And that is how you add a supporting file.